So, Sister Sweet Potato, you want to pray and then go ahead? Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. Abba, we thank you, Father, for another day that we're together with you. Abba, we thank you, Father, for a time of learning. We thank you, Father, for your protection. We thank you, Abba, that though we're in different areas, different spaces, we can come together um, to get in your word and to learn who you are. Abba, we just give your name all the honor, the glory, and all praise in your son, Yeshua, Hamashiach's name, Christ the King. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this week I have been um, looking at our Father, excuse me, the Lord's Prayer. And real quick, what I've learned so up to this point about the Lord's Prayer is where it says, Abba Father, or our Father, that word Father um, in Aramaic is Abba, and in Hebrew is Abi, A B I. And in the Hebrew culture, when that Abi, that's a that's like I I'm I am the daughter of of like I'm the daughter of Abi, and he wants me to come to him as a daughter, asking um, asking with him, knowing that come to him with um, in confidence, knowing that he's my Abi, and I can bring I can talk to him, I can walk with him, like he wants to cherish the moments that we have together um i this morning i was telling him that he wants us to send him cash apps he wants us to um to get on his back and take piggyback rides with him like that's how when you say our father that's um how the the yeshua's disciples when they asked them how should we pray or teach us how to pray when he said our father they would have heard approach, approach Hashem as if he's your father, as he's like you would your natural father. Um, and then I looked at our father, which are in heaven. And that in heaven, that is actually a Hebrew idiom. And um, when the disciples heard Yeshua say, our father, which are in heaven, they would have remezzed back to um, the scriptures where it showed um, God caring for Israel. Okay, and so our father, Abi, which art in heaven, you care for Israel. Um, hallowed be thy name. Um, that word, hallowed be thy name, that is, so hallowed be thy name. Um, in Leviticus 22, 32, there's two, there's a double command in there. And it says, it warns against the profanity of his holy name. And it calls, um, it calls for his name to be sanctified, to be hallowed by Israel. So hallow it is Kaddish, or in, in a, um, the Orthodox Jewish version, you'll see it say Yakadish. And that is um, hallow it be thy name. And that double command means that that command isn't just for the Israel priests, but it's to be applied by everyone. So if it was just one command in there, it would have been for the priest. But since there's a double command in there, that is for everyone to um, to fulfill by the witness in a, uh, by the witness of his or her life. Let's see. Um. And then I'm, I'm going to go back to the in at who it is in heaven. Luke, in Luke's gospel, he never refers to the father in heaven. And the reason being is, the reason being,
the reason being is because Luke's audience would have been Greek and they would have heard, they would have imagined images of Greek gods around the throne. So Luke wrote, the father will give the Holy Spirit out of heaven. And in Matthew, and Matthew, there's 12 recordings saying of um, Yeshua in which he used the term or the expression, our father who art in heaven. Our father who art in heaven, your father who is in heaven, or my father who is in heaven. And the Jewish audience would have heard that the love and care that Hashem has for the Jewish people. Again, they would have remez back to those scriptures of his kindness toward Israel in Psalms 107.43. And that the relationship between God and Israel isn't broken. It's not a business transaction, but it's um, it's personal. And then the word hollow. Back, jumping back to that, we are hallowed by God's, by God's holiness so that we can hallow God's name. So we are Kaddish, we are sanctified by God's holiness so we then can sanctify his holy name. And we do this in this, in this, in this way, um, in our acts, we act ethical, are moral, we're gracious, um, and we do that causing people to have positive feelings or their hearts to be turned to Hashem. So when we we take the challenge on the challenges that life brings, but we take on that challenge to sanctify God's name so that other people's hearts can be turned toward him through um, the lives that we live and in that are ethical, moral, and gracious to all people. And then the word H-I-L-L-U-L, -L -L, this is the opposite of Hallel. This is... Shonda, 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 but you got to slow down just a little bit. You you, you spelling and saying just a, 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 a tad quick. So um, it, this is good. So I know you have your notes and everything, but give us just a second to catch up on it. All right. Yes, we, don't have, we don't have the visual in front of us. So... And I know you've shared this several times, but this is this is really, really good stuff. And I don't want to just absorb too much of it right now. So if, if you if you um, finish up this book, spell it again for us, slow it down so we could catch the spelling of it, repeat the spelling of it, uh, and then let us know what it is. And then after that last one, let's pause and then we'll do some 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 recaps of some of this because you get some some really nice me finish and then we'll and then we'll be able to ask you questions if we have any yes sir Thank you. <clears throat> okay so the word kadesh k-i-d-d-u-s-h hashim is sanctify his name What what is the what is okay? You said something about Hallel. Let's go back there. What is that word? That H word that you used, and you said it's the opposite of Hallel, which means praise. That's yes, the, sir. The last thing that you you stated. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So that word is is sanctified, and the in the the opposite of this is Hill Hillu. It's H I L L U L. H I L L U L. And that is um, to defame, de so de to defame his name. In that in that word, there's a letter U, and you you had taught us that the U means when we see a U, it means to bring to or add to. So like in the word Hallel, praise, the word is used. We add to the praise of God. Well, in this word, my question was, do we add to the def the defamination of his name when we're not sanctifying it? Right. 
that's that's it. Okay. I want to kind of review and reflect this just a little bit because this this was was really good. You gave us a lot. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. This was really, really, really um, kind of eye opening. It does it does take the Lord's prayer what we call the Lord's Prayer or the Prayer of the Disciples, that makes it more personal. Um, Shonda, I do have a few questions. You said in Luke's Gospel, you was referring to the Our Father's Prayer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. What is the, uh, what's the address for that? One second. Sure. Anybody, I guess, if y'all have that. At the beginning of Luke chapter 11. Luke 11, 1 through 4. Okay, thank you. And then, um, I'll look at that in a second. And then the word, our father. So we talked about, I think last week we went over some of the letters and the meanings of the letters, like you said, John, Do uh, which is well done. The word you, when we see the word you, that has an inference of adding to or bringing forth something. And when we see the letter I, just any time the word ends with the letter I, it is referring to um, like personal possession. Yes, sir. Um, so personal possession. So when the word our father, I believe Shonda mentioned this was Aramaic um, uh, and not Hebrew, not Hebrew, which that's, that's, Kind of fascinating. I, I didn't know that, but the word ab, a b, mm -hmm. um, we see um, that word in of itself. You would see that word used as as the lowercase father. So mm -hmm. then you put the i on the end of it. Um, you put the, the uh, i on the end of it. You then um, make it personal, right? Personalizing the father to belonging to oneself. Like, hey, he's my father. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, and then in, let me see, the word, the word, uh, give me just a second here, the word, Kadesh, um, you spelt it as, and again, it's, I know it's pronunciation, it's K I D D U S H, um, but it 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 has the same letters as Kodesh, or at least the same. Um, what's Bercy? How you say it? The same um, like sounds, um, phonics. The same the same um, phonetical. I think is the word. The phonetical sounds is like it seems like Kodesh or Kadesh, which means holy, which makes sense if sanctify. And holy is this word when he, which again, if you think about it, for all of us that grew up on the our father who art in heaven, right? We don't use the word art, um, right? But that's still the thing that we've a lot of been, uh, been taught. Hallowed be thy name, right? It's a cute little meme on Facebook where that girl says, I know God's name is Howard, right? Howard it be thy name. It's a cute little thing. Um, but hallowed. It's nothing that we, we, that's not a word that we use in our vernacular. We don't use that word outside of a prayer. So for us, we really don't know what that's actually instructing us to do. We would find more credence or more, we would find more, I guess, Jesus joy, I guess, for lack of better words, by just saying the prayer because it's in the Bible and not really having any context of what is actually being said. And it was been sufficient enough in many of our environments uh, growing up to be like, that's good enough. We just say what the Bible says, but not really having any idea of what's actually saying or being obedient to the words. It's sufficient enough to see the words on the page. So all of us guarantee you for the thousands times he says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We may have asked once or twice what it means, but we will say, what does that mean? Oh, we're supposed to hollow his name. Mug, you don't know what hollow means, right? Like, we don't just talk around. We don't. So when you say that the word is Kadesh and it sounds phonetically or sounds from a symbol, like, like, um, 
a holy, and then you said it was the the holy, it, it does make it then, or no, it says Yakadesh, which is God is holy. It makes me then immediately go back to, you know, what what is holiness? What does it mean to keep something holy, something that's set apart, that's something for special use? He tells us to keep the, the Sabbath day holy. He says, you know, do not use the Lord's name in vain. Keep it holy, like the holiness of God. And I'm sure, and, and uh, Sean, I don't know if you did this, I'm interested in any of the Jewish transliterations. Does that word hollow it translate to anything else? In the CJB, and this is for anybody, the CJB, uh, the Scriptures 2009, OJB, or TLB. So if you have any of those uh, translations on your phone, anybody, uh, see what the uh, the TLV, OJB, so the, the, the Tree of Life, Orthodox Jewish Bible, the Scriptures 2009, and what's another one? Uh, there's one more. And see if that word translate differently um, closer to the Hebraic word. Anybody? Yes, what I see is um, in the OJB. Okay, which is the Orthodox Jewish Bible. It's Yit Kadesh. Spell it. Y I T Yet Yet K A uh -huh. D A A S H S H Yeah so yeah so there it is and then it's sanctified in the T in the TLV Okay so very good so that word uh come on somebody else is gonna go come on no Okay. Um, so yeah, once again, that word yet Kaddish, and I don't know if that's, and I don't want to get too far into it. The point that I, I'm not too concerned about the wording of it is more or less that I am, I am interested in the fact of what does it actually mean to hollow his name, right? Which is to make it holy, keep his name holy. Um, so our personalized father who art in heaven, may your name be kept holy. I think in some transliterations, it says that as well. May your name be kept holy. Um, but yeah, so anyway, then, then there's Bashan, but then the other things that you mentioned, what does it actually mean to keep it holy, right? It's warning us to, warning us against profaning his name mm -hmm. and speaking things that honors his name, which is really kind of very practical when you talk about how do you do that morally, ethically, and graciously, like do those things, right? Like that's how we could demonstrate those things. Um, really interesting on the Luke gospel, which makes a lot of sense. You know, the audience was different. I think that goes back to a lot of our foundational teaching, how, <clears throat> excuse me, how knowing the audience is so, is quite essential for us to gain. Like that's something that we would, that many um, people that oppose the scriptures or oppose the the Bible would say, look, there's a fallacy. They're different. They don't say it in this. Would there be some kind of big old sermon around why I don't listen to the NIV? Like it would be this whole bloviated kind of made up narrative, right? Of apologetics that happens, whether, you know, that, that would try to explain that differently versus, you know, they wrote it differently based on the audience. And okay, that makes the most sense. Why? Because half of the logic that we use to try to explain scriptures today is really 21st century logic and, and ethics and 21st century social norms that was not even a thing, you know, back in the in the scripture times. So that was really cool just to kind of re hear that and re-emphasize, especially why I wanted to take time and talk about the Our Father prayers, because to me, when to, the reality is, is this is one of the most basic things about our faith is like we know the, the pray read your bible what is mo what does everybody know everybody knows to our father right this is such a basic starter kit elementary kindergarten you know something that we learn in our christian churches like it's our father's prayer like and we'll go the rest of our lives have been, it's been said by thousands hundreds of millions of believers a generation time but to actually slow down and have a more authentic approach to it so we can actually understand what's being said to us and what we're supposed to be doing, like how empowered, like, and we say this all the time and it, and really, I'm gonna be honest. I used to say this all the time and it had no, I had no emotional 
quails with it. Nothing happened inside. Nothing drew me to the Lord. Nothing. I just said, I just said, thy father's birth. No, no, no big deal. Our father who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our churches. We forgive us our churches. Amen. Anyway, and just wham. It's out of there. And so when she brought this to our attention, it's like, man, I said, the believers need to know like something that we, this is like somebody teaching us about the letter A or the letter B that we're like, whoa, that's crazy. I've been saying outfit all my life, but wow, that's what that actually means. Which again, I, I during I am daughter, um, I, I know I shared, I like one of the things that Yeshua did for us. When he came, yes, he came to die and to be buried and to resurrect and to sit on the right hand of the Father, majesty on high and shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins. 1000%, but he also came to live a life, to model to us. And the thing that he told us was he came and introduced Elohim, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yah, Jehovah, Yahuwah, Yah, whatever. He came to introduce this God of heaven, the divine one, as something that Knowing that that these people didn't really, it didn't seem like they was doing. They wasn't really calling him father. He kept saying, "This is your father." That's that that's provocative. Like man, think about it for us. Like we know God as Savior. We know Jesus saved me, right? But like our identity is even what many fathers are is kind of like eh, whatever. But in the first century Jewish culture, the father position was, I mean. It was a privilege to be, you know, of Abraham's down line. And, you know, I'm from the tribe of Judah. Like their family names had so much. Who your father was mattered. Today's word don't matter who your daddy is. So for us, and half the time they ain't even there. So, but to just break down these, these first couple of phrases hopefully slows us down to be like, man, this is really good. Why? Because this was the prayer that our master taught the disciples to learn one. Think about it. Teach them to obey all that I've commanded. Well, what is something that Yeshua taught? The disciples came to him and it says, master, teach us how to pray. Then he says, command it. When you pray, pray like this. And I don't think that we really stop to acknowledge the, like the magnitude. He's telling us how to talk to the God of heaven. I, you know, and of course, and of all the scriptures of Rusty, you could, you could probably tell me one that may be different. Out of all the scriptures, this may be the, maybe John 3, 16. This may be the second or third most quoted scripture in all of the Bible. And probably got the least, oh, got the least power to it. Would that be fair to say? Even John 3, 16, people at least make you quote it to give your life to Christ. This one, yeah, it's a bad time. It's a nursery rhyme. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are. Like it's like that. I like to say it's a Sunday school scripture. And, and even but, and even it, and that's and, true. Yeah. No, go ahead. And and even maybe true. I, I don't even think it's even even that powerful. I mean, honestly, there's people that's like, yeah, I've witnessed the people on the street that says, Yeah, man, I said our fathers prayer all the time. Yeah, bro, I said the our father's prayer. Like I it's it, it's like, go ahead, brother Steve. When I learned it, I didn't even know it was in the Bible. I just learned the prayer. <laughs> that's that's what I mean. That's what I say. It's not even Sunday school. It's almost like that. Now I lay me down to sleep. You know, I pray the Lord my soul to keep because that's in the Bible, right? No, no, of course it's not. Some of y'all are like, wait, what? It's not. I'm being facetious, all right? Like, don't nobody get confused. But it, it 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 ran alongside that one, so when I heard you know her sharing this learning, I said this is so fundamental and elementary for us who claims to be children, which we are, and we're children of the Most High God. Like man, we should 
hey, y'all listen to how we supposed to, let's, let's hear something about him that we didn't know. Right? Like, hey, the our father prayer got that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Whoa, what are you talking about? Like, whoa, and I'm all God. Dang, I'll be like that. And I and for me, that's what it did for me. And that's why I was like, you know, I'm I'm very grateful. Um for for what did you say, bro? See, for sister sweet potato. That's a whole mouthful right there for sister sweet potato. There was okay, like, sort of the sister sweet potato. That's a lot of uh, but because I'm like that, we got it, we gotta hit that. We gotta hit that. We gotta be able to go to the father in more reverence, and we have to know how we go into him. You know, we can't just, and we say this during Shabbat meals, like we, you, we pray this prayer and I know we're doing our best to even move closer and deeper, but this just helps us to get closer to him because when master tells us how to pray to him, it's not just this casual Sunday school nursery rhyme that has really been presented to us. It's not, it's like, it, 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 I don't know. It, it's like the cool of the breeze or something. He's walking into like this is some heat. Like what? Is... So, yeah. So, anyway, anybody else in there? You know, bro, Steve, you do what you got to do. Anybody else want to share anything? This is this is this was good. Thank you, um, Sister Sweet Potato. May I say something? Of course. Um. So even in when he they said teach us how to pray. And his response was, therefore, pray in this way. Well, the Hebrew culture, they're taught to make God the object of their prayer. So it's even like he, from the beginning of the prayer, he's showing them also how to have God as the object. And down in the prayers that like, our father, he's the object, which are in heaven. And that word heaven, in, with, in the how you say it in Hebrew, it has an I-M in it. So it's plural. So not just the heaven, but our Father, which art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And then when you get down to where you're asking, give us this day, our daily bread, you're still asking for a need, but you're asking it in the, in the Father. So even though you have a need, it's still, God is still the object of the prayer versus. He's the need giver. He's the need giver. Um, When you say forgive others, their transgressions, um, and then, you know, help me forgive others i'm just paraphrasing but help me forgive others the way you forgive me that he's still the one i forgive to be forgiven it still gives all the object all the glory back back to him so it's not that i can't ask him for things i can't talk to him but in those asking he is the object of the asking and no no one else and no other god Um, I've heard Sister Sweet Potato share this earlier, but the when she had mentioned the halul and how it is to defame his name, I couldn't help but think about hallelujah, and it sounded like it was like in some forms opposite of that word. Um, so I just thought that was really interesting. I have a question. Um, before, oh, sorry. Um, before this prayer, would they have seen the God of heaven as Abba, as Father? Is that, like, that's what my ears are hearing you say, but yeah. Tell me what your ears are saying, your ears is telling you again. <laughs> Before this prayer, we say, right. yes. teach us how to pray, or how do you pray? Mm -hmm. Would they not have known the God of heaven as Abba, as mm -hmm. Father? No, 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 no. They that that that's what made all of this. That's what made people pissed off. Honestly, it's like Yeshua came, like Yeshua came to literally says, "You're here's what people here's what their ears heard prior to this." Alexandria was, we are sons and daughters of Abraham. We can't get to the father except through Abraham and through Moses. We listen to Moses' Torah. 
so, so we could be children of Abraham. And because Abraham is of God, we just need to be children of Abraham. So, Yeshua came and says, <laughs> before Abraham came here, bro, I was already there. So essentially, I love him, but Abraham ain't running nothing. That's what they hear. So what they were saying prior to, so Yeshua was like, nah, we, if you, bump being in Abraham, if you and me, because Abraham's in me, then we go directly to the father, Abraham's God, right? Because what they would say prior to that would be blessed are you, Hashem, Lord, Adonai, ruler or king, Melech of the universe, the most high God, right? Elohim. So they would have said Lord. They would have said Hashem. They would have said Elohim. They would have said the divine one. That's how they pray. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, the giver of all good things. They acknowledge him as God. Why? Because in the Shema, it says, listen, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul and all your strength. So they was constantly giving commands on how to serve Yahuwah or Yahuwah or serve the, the sacred name, right? Hashem Elohim. And Yeshua was like, yeah, that's true. It's who he is. However, he wants y'all to recognize him as father. And they're like, yo, bro, do you know what that means? That means what's true about his son and about his kingdom is true about me. And Yeshua says, I know. That's why I'm going to go prepare mansions for you up in my father's house. And it's like, and then when it came to Pontius Pilate, he says, why do you want to kill this dude? It's like, because this dude claims to be the son of God. And he, all of his followers are saying that they're sons of, they're calling God Abba. What? So that's when the disciples thought, hey amen. How do we give praises and glory to the most high God? He's like, like this, our father. Wait, what? That's hey, always hey, bro, wait a minute, bro. Chill, bro. You over here, boy, you, you, you wilding. What kind of, how can Sean be saying it? You're wild. You know, yes, he be saying like they wild, they wilding or something. I don't know. Like that's how they would have felt. That's what made Yeshua's ministry so provocative. He came to literally change the relational equity between us and God. He came to make a brand new, almost like a new relationship. And they were like, bro, you tripping. And that was against all Jewish societal norms. You just can't go and Oh God, your father, because of the, again, the identity of a father in that culture was so revered and so understood and so like, like the father, the master, the Lord, like that, like the Lord and the master. Okay, cool. We know we got it. But the father reciprocates. See, the master never reciprocate. He don't have to reciprocate. But the father is going to reciprocate back to you and give you his inheritance. And Yeshua was like, yeah, I'm his inheritance. Like, like, what do you mean? You his inheritance. Yeah, matter of fact, y'all his inheritance too through me. Bro, like, yeah, that's, and then he says, how do I, but prayer, right, to them is how do I approach him? That's what prayer is. Like, they knew prayer was this communal relationship between them and the most high God. Because you got to think, they may have never seen Yeshua sacrificed an animal. On his own behalf, right? I, I, I don't know if he participated in Passover. He may have not participated in animal sacrifices. I couldn't imagine you would told his disciples, like, I'm not doing, I, I'm coming soon. I, I don't, you know, like, I got this. I'm going to tone for the, you know, I could go directly to him. Watch this. Here's wine out, out of heaven. Here's this out of heaven. Here's healing out of heaven. Here's all this stuff. Let me show you that I'm connected to him. 
that I don't need to go. You know, I I can forgive sins. Why? Because I can make the blind the blind see, and I can make the lame walk, and I can walk on water, and I can quiet the storm. I'm connected to him. So they think it like, bro. They think it beyond that. Okay, well, since you that connected to him, and you telling me to connect to him, how do you want me to connect to him, Father? Boy, you wildin', bro. Do you think you sure would have not made um like the peace and like Thanksgiving sacrifice and things like that? Like good question. Good good question. But I think if it was if it was a Torah command, I think he did, yes. Got you. But I do know when it's time to give temple taxes, he told Peter, he's like, Why would you say that? <laughs> he's like, you know what I'm saying? Or when it was time of fasting, he's like, Why am I gonna fast when the bridegroom is here? Yeah, that's so true. He, he lived out things that the Torah would have says to do if it wasn't taken care of. But he's like, I've already taken care of it. He's like, I've, I've made you holy by the breath of my, my, I've made you holy by my breath. He never died. The disciples didn't get saved because of his uh, resurrection. Oh. They didn't get saved. They didn't get saved because of the shedding of his blood. He was alive. He says, when he washed their feet, Peter says, wash my whole body. He's like, I've already made y'all clean. Yeah. You didn't even shed no blood, bro. I'm God. Shut up. I'll do what I want. Right? Like, like that That was the... You know what I mean? So, I mean, if he did, he... he yes, sir. I, you know, so... Great question. The show bread. Like, don't eat. Yeah, that's part of it. Don't go eat the show bread in there. And she was saying, I'm hungry. Or my disciples are hungry. Like, yeah, they, let, have you not heard what David did? You know, bro, Steve brought, you know, taught that several weeks ago, you know, about like, bro, you you shucking corn or whatever they was doing. He did, he himself did. He, but so there was times that he would have pushed the boundary, essentially, of what would have been. Pure intended laws turn into Jewish traditions. He would have probably disobeyed some of those Jewish traditions that was intended to try to keep perfect law. Because he kept the law perfectly, but he kept the law holy, the intentions of the law. So he may have broken some of the, the, the traditions of the law in order to uphold the perfection of the law. Like, I'm going to go work on Sabbath if it means to show generosity, compassion, and bring forth life. Like, I'm I'm gonna do this work because the the uh, results of this is greater than the violation of it. So, like Rahab, her lying could have got her killed, but the 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 reward of her quote unquote unrighteous act brought forth a greater righteousness, saving God's people. Righteous war, that's a whole thing, right? Like David then participated in righteous war, or even like the penalties of the Torah was righteous. It was to try to get rid of the things that was not of God. And we were like, oh, that's so cruel. No, tell these people that they was full of sin. Does that make sense? I think it's really cool that now I'm hearing this verse our father was like a mic drop moment they looking at him like what yeah it was. was it was a whole moment just and then that makes me think about when you share that every word in the bible is there for a reason um and so that's that's mind-blowing thank you yeah baruch hashem yeah yeah sister sweet potato Yeah. Michaela, come on. I think you did. I see your mic go off a little bit, or was I tripping? Um, when uh, Sweet Potato was talking about how Yeshua was re emphasizing um, making Abba the object of the prayer, yeah, it just like I immediately thought about how we're taught like so much of the western world is like uh, we're the object um how he's he's very much not the object of our prayer our praise 
um, our worship, like, is very much us. And so as I was, like, walking through the prayer, it's like, man, even in the asking for things or even in the coming to him, it's because you know that it's found in him or it's because you know like that um, apart from him, it can't happen. Um, like the forgiveness or, um, yeah, like he's still the object. So that was, that was really good. Which also kind of makes me think, I think I seen Tati and Brother Steve, but um, he said, uh, the disciple says, teach us how to pray like John's disciples taught us how to pray. Pretty interesting, kind of go to Alexandria's question, like, what how John taught them how to pray? I'm sure John. Y'all hear me talking? No, my bad. No, you're, you went out. Okay, but y'all did hear me start? Okay. Yeah, how John's disciples would have heard him praying, like, would John have, say, re refer to him as the one who's going to send his son? You know, because it had to be different than their traditional rab, right? R-A-B. Okay, so if y'all... For, for for context, the Jewish learning system had three different kinds of teachers. The rab, R-A-B. That's like a regular, that's like a school teacher. And then they had a rabbi, right? There's that, that rabbi, which is R-A-B-B-I. That's more like a master teacher. And then they had the third one, which is the great teacher, is Rabboni, R-A-B-B-O-N-I, Rabboni, which means like the great teacher. So in Matthew chapter 25, when he says, don't let nobody call you Rabboni, the great teacher, he wasn't talking about just a, a traditional elementary school teacher or a master teacher of a rabbi. So nonetheless, I hear the question, John's disciples taught him how to pray. Well, John knew that, behold, the Lamb of God who was coming to take away the sins of this world, did he teach his disciples to say, pray to the one who's going to send the Lamb. It had to be different than their traditional teachers. For his disciples to say, John is teaching his disciples to pray a different way. Are you going to teach us how to pray? Like, it, it, like John them got their special prayer, which also is interesting that different groups of people had different prayers. So, I mean, even those that, that that's that's kind of a whole. I don't know, kind of whatever, we won't get there, but there's different types of prayers, which I don't think we talk about a lot. I think for the most part, we generalize all of our prayers. Oh, we're just praying. You know, I know uh, Sister sister Sweet Potato, I know my wife and I, we, we, we been in environments where we know we have different kinds of prayers. We know about different types of prayers, right? It's like we have a a prayer of healing and then an accessory prayer, right? Like when I was growing up, you had two different, you had the general prayer and then you had an accessory prayer. Like both of those is a part of the, the service as some services just open with prayer. But that's not really a very talked about idea or, I, you know, of, of faith is to talk about different kinds of prayers. But John's disciples, or excuse me, Yeshua's disciples, her Yokanan's disciples saying something that was different, that will lead, lead them into going to him and saying, Rabbi, <laughs> teach us how to pray. Like these mugs, they talking some tight stuff, man. Like, can we get something? And he hit him with the, I'd be. Yeah, that's something different, man. That's something different. All right, Tati, was you going to say something? 
So when you were doing the three different teaching teachers, the rab rabbi, how do you say the third one? Rabboni. Rabboni. Earlier, Shami said that words ending with I like gives it like a more personal level. So is it like as the as the teacher con- well, as you continue with different teachers, it's more of a different personal level with the teacher. Correct. So the first one, Jen, was just rap. It doesn't belong to anybody. Just as, as somebody who teaches. Mm-hmm. The rabbi makes that person like my teacher, my personal teacher, like the one who's teaching me. Mm-hmm. And then you have Rabboni, which that then brings it to, let's say, a a the, the ultimate voice teacher. And nobody should be a Rabboni other than Yeshua. He's our great teacher. His word supersedes everything. But some of the Pharisees, they was trying to make themselves, their schools, they was making themselves ribonized. Like mm-hmm. they, it was saying, I got the, I got the interpretation of Torah. Ultimately, nobody could come. Like, it's this. And you have like different schools like uh, Hallel or Shammai or, you know, Gamiel. Uh, you had different schools of, of Rabboni's that Nicodemus, Yeshua tells you Nicodemus, you are a Rabboni, right? You sit in the place of a Rabboni among the people. You are a great teacher among the people and you don't know these things. You got to watch this because here's what he said. I thought you supposed to have ultimate authority in spiritual things. That's literally what he told him. He was really being kind of smart with him. Like, ain't you supposed to be Ain't you supposed to be a Rabboni? Ain't you supposed to got all the spiritual answers? <laughs> like he was, Yeshua had a smart mouth, bro. He was like, oh, he was Nicodemus. So now nah, Yeshua was like, hey, bro, hey, I, I thought I thought you got all the answers, cuz. I thought you had all the answers. And Nicodemus was like, man, bro, stop playing with me, man. You know I don't. So why you think I've come here? I don't be trying to get the cheat code from me, then go back tomorrow and tell everybody I got the answers. So you know, Yeshua says, be born again. He's like, go back to my mama's vaginal canal. Yep, go tell him that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very spicy interaction between them. It really is, you know. Like, so nonetheless, because he said, aren't you supposed to be a great teacher? Aren't you supposed to have all the interpretations? And for us as followers of Christ, we may sit as a position of a rab or a rabbi, but Yeshua says, let nobody call you rabbi. Let you do not have the ultimate. Yeshua, whatever he says, whatever the most high God says, that's the ultimate authority for all things. And we just could execute those things as different levels of teachers, but not it's with figs and nah, it ain't. No, it ain't. You better talk to Abba, right? Like you better ask him. Don't, you know, what he say. But you'll see that that's what those positions. So when he resurrected from the dead, Mary came to him and what did she call him? Rabboni! Great teacher! The ultimate master! You have accomplished death. You beat death. Ultimate teacher. Everything you said is true. You know all things. You got it. You you got it. You, you beat it. Ultimate teacher ultimate master he said woman don't cling to me i got things to do <laughs> he did he did he said hey man this ain't, I, i'm here for that give me a hug and i got things to do so, i ain't gonna be here long don't get too comfortable i'm about to roll out again so does that help tati yes sir and i have two more questions Come um on. is it somewhere in the scripture that talks about the different types of prayers or is it just reading and differentiating the different ones I could say this, the one that we're reading right now, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, as Shami showed, that that tells us right there, there's three types of prayers. Teach us how to pray, Yeshua's type of prayer, like John's disciples, that's the second kind of prayer, and one that's not Yeshua's or John. Those are three kinds of prayers. I don't think, because see, again, Tati, this is not a, this is not a college course book. Right. It's not going mm-hmm. to break it down for us to be like, let's let's put it in a, a how you say APA format or MLA format. So we the audience, they didn't write it like that. 
they wrote it to an audience that understood those things. That's common. I have a book. Tony, are you in our bedroom? Yes, sir. Hey, your camera's frozen. It, oh, yes, so sir. I, we can't see. Okay. So anyway, so I have a book that uh, one of my daughters, excuse me, bought for me. Um, I think from Rosh Hashanah, one of the holidays. Anyway, the book is called, I think it's called the Haggadah. No, the Haggadah is something different. Shana, what's that? Nonetheless, there's literally a prayer book that a lot of um Macy and a lot of Jews still use the different types of prayers for different kinds of reasons. Um, mm -hmm. and we have in 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 the 21st century Christian church, we don't necessarily have different kinds of prayers, but we do have different kinds of services, right? Like we have, like we have um um at the wedding, right? We have a wedding and then you give vows and those kind of things and then at the funeral right you have you have eulogies and, mm -hmm. and things you give sermons and other things you give devos like we have different kinds of we are in the bible study right we're in a you know apologetic like we have all these different terminologies really right for kind of some of the very similar things as well so because we could talk about in our in our paradigm of culture we don't differentiate like Oh, we don't like what's the difference between a devo and a, and a mini sermon? Like we don't we don't talk like that. We just we just share, right? Like or share my learning, right? That's a new thing or or I want to teach you a lesson or whatever like those kind of on like regular stated idioms that we use that we don't even realize that we're using. Like what's a devo? Honestly, you can't find devo in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. But we do devo every morning, don't we with them kids at school? Yes, sir. Does that make sense? So it's like, yeah, they, they didn't write it for us. When they wrote it, they assumed that people had enough common sense to know what prayer is. We so dumb and so far away from it. We still trying to look it up and we still really don't got the answer. We do it, but we really don't. We just found out about the first word, our father's prayer. And it literally says our father. We so far behind. So they talking to some people that this was just common information. We're trying to cutting Instagram and and MTV and all kind of stuff to try to get back to the closest objective. So that question has to be looked at through a certain lens of it's not going to pop out at you as if they thought you was reading it. Mm -hmm. But identified for sure, we see three, two verses, prayer of Yeshua's disciples, prayer of Yochanan's disciples and others. That's three right there. So when you read the scriptures, look at it through that lens and it will tell you. So then if I ever come to a teacher, say, I'll share my learning. So in Luke chapter 11, there's at least three types of prayers that we see. We see that. Da, 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 da. Why? Because it says so. Mm -hmm. that makes, it just says it like and we don't got to break it down. It's not bullet point. It just tells us that it is. Does that help, Tati? Yes, sir. And what's your last one? What is intercessory is that what you said ah very good that's an idiom well I, I, Sean, I don't know if you would call that an idiom but it's a word that we use in a lot of church settings it is a type of prayer that at least how we how we walked in and if i called my father right now who's a nazarene pastor it says hey we want to have an accessory prayer the first question it will be asked is for who is to me to intercede on somebody's behalf. Like if I'm having intercessory prayers, like Father, I'm coming to you on behalf of Brother Steve right now. Oh, Brother Steve got problems, Lord, and help this brother overcome his problems because something wrong with him, Lord. And you know, like like uh, I'm I'm doing the praying for Brother Steve. I'm interceding for him. I'm I'm coming in. Instead of Brother Steve, I'm praying for him. That's the way that we, or right now, we'll be like, Lord, I come before you on behalf of our nation, Lord, that you would help. While we are interceding right now. We're stepping in the middle and we're praying for our nation right now. We're praying for our, our leaders. And we're like, that's versus you have these personal prayers, which is like Michaela talked about earlier. Me, 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 I, 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 you know, like it's the, the whole, the song of me and I, 
-hmm. me, I, and my, right? Like those are the, the notes. What are they? I, me, my. Like that's the, you know, that's what. But see, if you know I had a little harmony in me, did you heard that? Me, 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 me. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Sue, you hear that? It sang a little bit. <laughs> no, I can't. But that's what it is. So then you have the me prayer. Like, oh, Lord, it's me. It's me. There's a song I think. We say, it's me. It's me. It's me. Oh, Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. prayer. Not my mama. Not my daddy. Not my cousin. Not my sister. Not my brother. But it's me. Oh, Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Right? Like, it's that kind of prayer. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, you know, that death wish. Lord, I wish you would just change them, God. They just so stupid, Lord. They don't know nothing, Lord. Open up their eyes. You know, you ain't interceding. You you hoping the Lord just wear them out. God, they getting on my nerves, Lord. Oh, they just being this, Lord. Oh, God damn this, Lord. And they just so ugly, Lord. And they da 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 da, -da Lord. You know, that, you know, that prayer when somebody make you mad. Yeah. Just <laughs> a big... Dang, you just got name drop like that? Okay, yeah, so what'd you say now? Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. Well, I'm about to say, dang! No, it was bad timing. No, nah, whatever, <laughs> whatever, all right. Now, let's intercede for Sister Shonda right now. Good gracious. Yeah, all right. No, Jeez. it was bad Tell timing. What, really I was gonna, what I was going to say was um, an example of an intercession per Yeshua um, he gives an example of an intercessory prayer in John 17, 6 through 26, when Yeshua prays for, for the disciples. And his prayer, he was praying for the disciples. And right. that could be a, a, a that could be an example of what an intercessory prayer is. Right. And then his personal prayer would be one that you see in the in the olive grove of Gethsemane or the Garden of Gethsemane, where he's just like, I'm coming to you, Lord. I'm coming to you, bidding that you would take this cup away from me. Like literally, that's so that's so those are different, also kind of different types of prayers that you would see as well, too. And then you see Yeshua pray for people, right? Like he prayed for Peter in Luke chapter 22. Right? He prayed for Peter. He says, and here's how we start. He says, Simon, Simon. I say Tom wants to beat the hell out of you. And I'm going to let him. Literally. Then he says, I'm praying for you. That after you get your tail whooped. And you overcome. And you become strengthened. Then go help your brothers out because he's going to go for them next. So he's a prayer for you, bro. You about to go through it. He's like, all right, I'm not think about it, but we'll be asking Jesus fix fix this thing that Satan got on me. He's like, no, nah. <laughs> I'm praying. No, nah, I'm just praying that you go through it. So that's another type of prayer. We see him pray for his disciples. We see him pray for Simon. We see him pray for himself. He taught us how to pray. I'll I mean, I, yeah, I, I want to say something. I just want to be careful. Um, I don't see him praying for healing, though. I, I don't ever see him praying for for nobody to be healed. I mean, I guess unless you consider it. I mean, he, he commanded sickness to go away. I don't even know if the disciples did they pray? Did they pray to cast off demons, or did they just command the demons to leave? I like, guess I don't know. That's a Different. We, we we don't gotta go there right now, but Tati, to your point, um, yes, there's different ways to observe the different types of prayers. First thing, were you gonna say something? No, I was just gonna uh, have a uh, like a takeaway after after you're done. Yeah, yeah I'm done. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, come on. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I guess. Um, you're talking about this prayer and uh, let your name be sanctified and let your kingdom come. Um, you know, like 
uh, we were just talking to somebody this weekend who uh, uh, you know it, it's starting to question the Bible and question you know that it's um, you know that it knows what it's talking about and so, you know so I mean it's just kind of occurred to me okay so the first thing you question is that God's the creator okay everything just happened by random you know um, he didn't create it and uh, then the second thing you question is the the morals he teaches in the Bible aren't right because you know you're uh, you're uh, you're saying that LGBTQ is not normal you know and um, you know and it, and everybody knows today that that's that's normal you know and uh, uh, so the Bible is it's just out of date it's not right so pretty soon. Everything God said, everything God did is is not holy anymore. It's just like, you know, um, so so that's something to pray for, you know, uh, that his name would be holy, that people would uh, um, people would respect who he is, what he's done, what he said, you know, um, and for his kingdom, you know, that... Uh, You know, the, the, yeah, for him to rule, you know, instead of people, you know, getting in, getting in, uh, in charge and then padding their own pockets with, you know, money or, or, you know, letting, I don't know. It's just, these are, these are very good, <laughs> very good prayers and, uh, um, very necessary prayers right now. And I agree. I, I do want to, I, I think, gosh, to just show them to thank you. I mean, I, I can't say thank you enough. I think this is just so, such a healthy, um, such a necessary time. I do believe this is um, very fitting, you know, for us as believers is like, I mean, think about it. It's like with, with the world of chaos, of turmoil, of hatred, of division, of divisiveness, of a world full of like, you know, tampons of boys' bathrooms and and rebellion and backbiting and a world full of whoring and a world full of independence and a world full of isolation and a world full of, you know, bickering and a world full of like just malicious behavior, just all those different things. I don't think there's a there's a more appropriate time like for the for the for the children of the most high God of like man Lord how do we pray <laughs> how do we pray in this seat like how do we pray now like bro what what do you want us to say to you like how do we right how do we how does our hearts get quickened to seeing all these things and what is our response and we say pray I think the appropriate thing is like Lord how do we pray like what do you want us to pray. Because, man, it's undoubtedly that we need to be in prayer. Like, undoubtedly, man. Like, we got to pray. Each one of y'all see, right? Each one of us sees something that we're like, man. Whether it's a person, whether it's a situation, whether it's something on the interweb, whether it's something, it's like, bro, like, Lord. Come on, I do what you do. Like, stop. I, what, I don't know what to say. What do I say? And we'd be like, Daddy, may your kingdom come. And that's something I think that I want us to spend a little time on meditating on and at least taking away is like, like Sister Shonda said, the Abbey word our father in heaven, like how, how powerful that is. Right. And this is our father who art in heaven. May your name be kept holy. Right. And then this other party says, may your kingdom come. Now here's another kind of word phrase that I think we could all investigate really thoroughly. There's a problem with this word kingdom. It's a major problem with this word kingdom. Um, let me see. I know Sabria Kishan and Tiny Michaela. Sean, I think y'all can resonate. See, as a Chiefs fan, 
right, and living in Kansas City, if you go around Kansas City and you says the kingdom, they're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs professional football team. Like my niece, who's five, will probably hear kingdom and have that resonate more with a foot the NFL football team than any than what it means biblically. Another issue is that none of us, uh, and even if like Brother Steve, who who's a um, an aunt who really likes you know history and they that you know and their their history buffs and things of. Even if you look at the 14th and the 13th, 12th century and the 16th century of having kingdoms like rule different nations, even then you really don't understand what a kingdom actually feels like. And then none of us could really understand what it's like to live in the kingdom of the Palestinian kingdom when David was a king. As a matter of fact, I think we have a, a very, very, um, how, how did um, Shonda say it? She's like um, the, the hello, right? Which is the opposite of praise, right? It's like, it's to defame. I think we have almost the opposite presentation of what a king actually is. Because in our political power, we get to choose who sits in a position of power. And if we don't like it, we could we could bicker and complain and we could we could snarl our noses and we could we could, this isn't my I mean we could do all I mean y'all see yeah in a in a true kingdom that's a death sentence. That's a, there ain't no voting. This ain't, a, a kingdom is not a democracy. A kingdom is a benevolent dictatorship. So break it down. The loving God gets to tell us what to do. So we got really no true tangible example of what sitting under a king or sitting under somebody with absolute earthly authority feels like. But when we go to this, our father's prayer and we say, our father in heaven, may your kingdom come. We don't really understand what that even like we're, we don't understand the absolute authority of a governing officer. We don't. Why? We get opinions. We get to talk back. As a parent, I gotta I gotta demand it sometimes. I'm like, hey, don't talk back to me. This I, I, I'm in my household. Love it or like it, there is a there is a defined authority in my household. But outside of this, in many households, there's not. There's a compromising entities. There's conflicting entity. There's 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 the 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 peasants of the house, right? The ones who don't bring no money, right? They just spend everything, kids, right? They just you know all them most just just wasting electricity and all of that, and they want to have an opinion about how you run. Things. Like that's that's the normalized version, and then you take that out of their kids talking to their teachers and authorities in all kind of crazy way. Then you have this other one, well, you know, you have this riots against the police authority. Then you have this other one, and you have these anarchists against the government. And you get this other one, this democracy, this president. And screw my president! Like there's no, there's no place in our world where we have a tangible representation of true authority to even have a glimpse of when we say God's kingdom, his absolute rule and authority, we do not have a tangible representation. That's why many of us approach God's kingdom as a compromise and as a democracy and not a benevolent dictatorship. God rules. But we don't get that. We don't understand that, hey, bro, he runs this. And we're praying that you run all of this world, but we don't want God to tell us what to do with our lives. 
So we want a new king to tell us how to operate, but we don't even let his rule of his commands govern our life now without us making compromise. This is probably the most rebellious time, right? And this is what happened with Israel. They rebelled against their God. So guess what he did for them? Since they're rebelling against him, he put them under an absolute authority of slavery to teach them submission. He taught them submission through pharaohs, through Nebuchadnezzar's, through, through those kind of mugs. Why? He says, I let these mugs get so powerful and so strong. He says, I gave Nebuchadnezzar all of his strength. Why? So then my children would see that I'm aware Nebuchadnezzar out in the same kind of respect and the same kind of reverence they gave to him. They now need to give to me because I'm more powerful than him. And they still end up rebelling against him. So when we're asking for his kingdom to come, we're asking for his reign, his rule, his authority, his absolute yes, sir, to all things. It don't matter what it is. And, and we got, we can even simulate that. None of us, like we really can't absolutely simulate what it means to have someone absolutely rule over us. So when we're saying, may your kingdom come, like we're asking for the heavenly dictator that we say, oh, that sounds so bad, whatever. As followers of Christ, that's, he should tell us what to do. He should dictate what we do now, because that word has such a negative connotation over oh, dictatorship. Oh, that's so bad. That's just, again, our arrogance that would tell us that can't, God can't tell me what to do. God can't be no dictator, which literally means to tell you what to do. That's what a dictator is. Dictation to speak poor the, the person. And so I am the one who speaks literally. That's what it did. I'm the one who speaks. I'm the one who gets to talk. I'm the one who gets to say so. That's a that's God. That, it's it's the Lord's voice. I what did Yeshua says? I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only listen to His words. I only respond to His dictation. Whatever He dictates, I do. Total obedience, total submission. That kingdom idea, man. And we play. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. We think more like a sports team that we get to dress up and make a bunch of noise and hopefully our team wins more than God gets to rule. The identity of a kingdom looks more like a Sunday morning NFL team than it looks like any quote unquote dictator we've ever been under. Now, people in other countries and cultures can have a better idea of the kingdom. Right. And we want because why God is going to rule with love and grace and mercy and holiness. So, yeah, he's going to dictate, but he's going to dictate with that stuff. And we're like, yeah, no, I just don't like the word. I don't need nobody telling me what to do. Until it messes up, God, can you come help me fix it? So that that part of like, man. I'm praying that as followers of him, like we really see what, what does the father have to say? Because that's, because that's how his kingdom is going to be established by us obeying what he says. Without compromise. That's a big, that's a, that, that, that's not a, that's not a very attractive or that's not a sexy um, gospel presentation. But when they wrote kingdom, they thought about David. When Matthew says, "May your," when he chose to use that word kingdom, he was thinking about David, the Palestinian kingdom. Because why? That's what they, they, that's what they was thinking about. They was thinking about having, you know, being owned by Rome. Like they was thinking about real life people that owned them and said, may your kingdom come. I'm tired of Caesar's kingdom. I don't want Caesar's kingdom, bro. Can we get out of Caesar's kingdom? Can we belong to you alone? In our culture, we're like, I want, I want to own myself.
That's why we all struggle with that. It's like, oh, I just want to do what I want to do. I did it my way. <laughs> and the right verse, Pete. <laughs> Frankie, oh, Frankie Sinatra. Old friend of mine. Not really, I'm playing. But, um, yeah, so I just think that that part right there, the first couple stanzas, for lack of better words, our Father who art in heaven, amazing. Um, Sanctify, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Like, man, when I'm praying that, I really want to, I want to, I want to press into that. But I really want God's kingdom to rule. Like, may I be in that kingdom alone and not the kingdoms of this world and not the kingdoms of, because th th this world around us, whatever, whoever's running the show in this worldly kingdom, that must is causing some chaos and some havoc, bro. I'm sorry, whoever, whoever running this kingdom, boy, some, these, <laughs> these mugs tripping, boy. Most out here tripping. I'm cool. Lord, may your kingdom come. Go ahead, uh, Sean. I'm going to say, and in that, um, <clears throat> your kingdom, excuse me, how it be thy name, the, they they also here die to die for the sanctification. So they're also willing oh, to good. die for the that's sanctification right. of that's his good. name to be made holy. That's right. And yeah, Yeshua was, an, was another example of what it meant to die to sanctify the, yeah. the holy name of God. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Death, death is absolutely pretty central in that equation. It's just like an army. It's just like when people go to war, like, you know, the, the, the soldiers in the army, they're signing up for death, right? Like that's literally what they're signing up for. They're on their thing. They sign up. Do you understand signing up for the army could and will, or could and potentially will result in death it literally does in the contract you will literally die for the sake of this country that's con that's contract they don't go into it saying oh well no can i just not do something that's going to lead to death every every um soldier in the united states army is literally property of the united states government I think that goes to show too like you were saying that thomas wasn't a punk no he, he wasn't he, he wasn't a punk they wasn't they signed up knowing they was ready they was they was always ready to die even though they had those moments of humanity in their hearts like they they knew that they was ready to die for the for the kingdom of god and, and then when paul gets a hold of that he's like man die to your flesh the same way you see us die to our bodies like and, you know, like, he's just like, okay, you see this? Now, here's your tangible representation. Now, you die to yourself. But we don't got no examples of people just truly, you know, I'm talking about in the church at large, people truly die to themselves. Nah, we're, we're, we're innately, all of us are incredibly selfish. It's like, Lord, help us, you know, maybe repent, you know, so your kingdom can be shown, right? Like through all the things that we're doing. And man, we get so caught up in the self, it's, it, it's crazy. So. So, yeah, my prayers, you know, Yeshua, like teach us how to approach our father, teach us how to pray, right? Teach us how to pray. Yeah, that's what I got. So, anyway, bro, Steve, do you think? <laughs> yeah, so anybody else, anybody else want to share anything? Sean, thank you so much. This was, this was really, really, really powerful. Go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry, Tanya. I, I thought you was reaching for your phone. I apologize. No, 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 no. Just take me forever for some reason. Um, yeah, so my takeaways was just I don't know, just looking, um, just seeing like Yeshua literally gave us this 
prayer to go talk to the father with. But it's just like growing up and also, well, yeah, just growing up, it it always seemed like it was just like a, a template. It was like a suggestion. It was like, okay, you can pray any way you want to, but, you know, if you don't know how to pray, you you could do it kind of like this rather than like, hey, you said you want to learn how to pray. Okay, this is how you talk to the Father when you're in his presence or, or when you're looking for his presence. Um, yeah, so we got that and um, yeah, and um, I'm I'm learning new words like uh, uh, kedush, uh, which means sanctify the name, and um, also just uh, hello, which just means to defame the name and. So r real quick, Tony, let me uh, as well make sure we get some action. So the word we found that yes, yet Kadesh, but it, it comes from the same word or the same um sounding of when we say the Ruach Ha Kadesh. Mm -hmm. So the Ha Kadesh means the holy, right? So the word holy and sanctified are synonymous in the scriptures. So they're the same word. To be set apart. So when you're sanctifying, you're being made holy. And to be made holy is you are literally becoming so different and so, so unique that you're only used for a specific purpose. And for us, the specific purpose is to glorify God. And he moves us away from glorifying this world or glorifying self. So that's what it means to be made holy, be holy as he is holy, be so far apart from yourself that you're only used for his special use. And when he chooses to use you, he uses you however he wants you, but you don't have to say, wait a minute, let me go do something that I was doing. I've already made, I've been holy. I've just set apart. You are, it's, it's, it's completely up empty. It's only used. Like for instance, I think I said this at the time of HG. The the most holy chair in the entire house, right, is the is the toilet. You only sit on the toilet for one special use, right? To to, to relieve your, your bodily functions. That that is the primary objective for that seat. But the chair, the couch, the bed. Those are just used commonly. You could use those for anything. There's nothing, no special use for those. You just sit down because you want to be comfortable. But when you go to the bathroom in that toy, it's like, I am using this chair for this specific use. So that word Kadesh, as she was saying, hollow it to make holy, to sanctify, to be specially used like Hollow would be your, your name is only used for special use. I would only use your name for intentional purposes. I would only call, I would be like, oh, yeah, or, oh my God, like, I'm. It, it, it's not going to be common. When I speak your name, it is going to be used for a specific and a set aside purpose. It is intentional that I'm saying your name. I'm not saying your name as a fill-in or as a gap or as a curse word. I'm saying your name with absolute intentions. I'm setting it aside. I don't just call on him just because I you know, want to. So that's where the, the Yet Kadesh, the Kadesh, the Kadesh, the Hakadesh, all those kind of sounds that we were making all essentially comes back to this. You'll probably even see it sometimes spelled with a Q. Blue letter Bible probably would spell that Hebrew word with a Q, some with a K, some with the I, some with the A, some with the O. It doesn't matter the sound of it. The Kodesh means holy, sanctified, set apart for special use. And he, Sabbath day, holy. Only day I'm supposed to rest on. People, holy. 
used for the Lord's glory. The Lord's name, holy. Moses, take your shoes off. You're supposed to wear shoes everywhere you go. Not here. Take them off. This is holy ground. This ground right here is set aside for my presence to be here right now. Take them shoes off. The priest made holy, the tribe of Levi, holy, set apart, special use. They they don't have a, a Shabbat, right? The, 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 pre, the, the Levitical priests don't got no Shabbat. They work every single day. They're set aside. They're holy. So when Peter tells us that we are a holy people, peculiar people, a holy nation, peculiar people, set aside. But if we're doing everything the world's doing and just la, 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 just merry, merry go rounding with the world, then we're not being set apart for special use. We're just blending in with everybody else. Big, so just, um, when you said that his name is set, his set apart, I mean, like we, we don't, we use his name only for special use. That is another reason why they say they refer to him as Hashem, the name. Like they don't just they just don't call him um Yah and call him his most holy names. They were even in the even in this prayer that Yeshua taught, he says, um, our father which art in heaven, how it be, he didn't say how it be Yah Yahuwah. He said how it be Hashem, how it be your name. And that that as we learned that Ha is the ultimate the and then Shem being named. So Ha Shem, the name above all, the, the name above all names. Man, man, Shonda, you just said something, bro. Kind of pricked me. I don't know. Have we do we ever see Yeshua refer to Abba as the sacred name? Any any transliteration of it? Yahuwah, Yah, Jehovah, like anything of that? Have we do we ever see him? And Brother Steve, the only thing that I could think about, the only thing I could think about is if they replaced the word Lord or Adonai with his name, but then if you go to the, a lot of the Hebrew texts, it's still Hashem. So I don't believe that there is any time we ever see Yeshua refer to the Elohim. Word. Go ahead. An example, an example I think of is um, when he quoted the uh, what's that prayer in, in Deuteronomy? Shema. Yeah, the, he quoted the Shema, and he said he didn't say uh, um, he didn't use the, the name that was in there. He said uh, the Lord our God. He used the word Lord, the Greek word for Lord. He didn't use a, a, a transliteration of of the name, you know, Yah or Yahuwah or whatever. Mm. Mm. Okay, Tiny, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for going. Continue with your takeaways. Um, and also just seeing like how personal, uh, how personal like the father, uh, the word for father is. It's just, um, it's. it's so crazy how we just well how I'm just kind of glazed over it just yeah um and also I learned about the three different teachers and uh I've heard this before uh, about rap but now I got a, a better understanding of it, like the the ultimate teachers and it's like the teacher it's almost like if I'm understanding it correctly, it's almost like ha. It's like like ha, like the rabbi or the rabbi. Um, yeah, hold on real quick. I just like if not quite because because from my understanding and learning, when you talk about ha for the most part, you're speaking about things in the spiritual world, like ha satan, ha kadesh. Hashem, Ben, you know, the kind of things that are more 
spiritual level. When these rabbonis, okay, the, the rich young ruler, what did, he, what did he call Yeshua? He says, great teacher. He called him rabboni. So then Yeshua's like, why are you calling me the ultimate one? Nobody is good. Nobody could be, no human could be ultimately good. Versus everybody else who referred to Yeshua referred to him as what? As Lord. Yeshua didn't take on that right bone. I just kind of dismissed it with Mary and the rich young ruler. But in other words, like even with Nicodemus, it's those people that says on earth. I mean, I guess for lack of a better word, <laughs> Moses may have been considered a Rabboni. He was the ultimate teacher. Essentially, like he was that connected with, it was just God, Moses, people, nobody else. I, I couldn't go above Moses. But as things starts going down, you start having these teachers of religious law who had like immense interpretation and they felt like they got, I am equal to Moses in my understanding, right? They said they go take the seat up. They take Moses' seat. That's what Yeshua talks about. Like they, they, they saying they, they could do what Moses did. Like, don't you follow them mugs? So, um, so that's so when you hear ha again, comma is from what I understand is traditionally speaking about from the spiritual realm. When we see the rabboni and those ones are actually still speaking from the from the earthly position or responsibility versus kind of like the spiritual. Um, like even when we talk about the yetza hara. The, we're talking about something that's invisible. We can't see the 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 bad spirit, right? We can't have the bad inclination. We can't see the hara. We can't see the asetan. We can't see Hashem. We can't see the ruach hakadesh. We can't see those things. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, continue. Yeah. Um, and just kind of speaking, uh, yeah. Another thing on Rabbi Nye, it was a heart check. It was like, uh, when I took away from it, it was just like. Don't allow like yourself or like someone else to get to the point of Rabbi Nine. That's real. Sure. Absolutely. And then mm -hmm. the uh, more understanding of like how that looks with the Pharisees and you know the, the teachers of the law. It's just like right, y'all don't know that. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, that's real. That's good, Adrian. That's all I got. It's really good. Thank you. All right, somebody else. I have a question. Um, when you were first explaining Rab, Rabbi, and Rabboni, you had mentioned that the Rabbi would have been like a master teacher. Would he also have served as like a master? Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's what it is yeah it was interchangeable with master so rabbi just means like you come in as a student you come in as a servant but it's still he would have still been positionally as a as a master yes so then would have would all masters have been rabbis or was that not not necessarily because um like not because even in this context, these rabbis were still Torah rabbis, right? They were still teaching God's word. You had you had masters who didn't have nothing to do with God, right? Like you had like Egypt was a master, and you know people in you know Egyptians were masters. So master was just kind of like the position of a household. It's almost like saying, um, is everybody that if, if, does everybody that have um, oh, does everybody that have a wife have children or does everybody that every husband does he have to go to church right like they, they it could be both and a master with just a natural position hmm. just a natural across the board you could have you know you could have because there was slave masters, there was household masters essentially rabbis right and and that jewish context was those who still was mastering but they were teaching their house from the lens of Torah. So Torah was specific to God's people. Mastery was just a general term, just kind of across the board, just like landlord or husband or, you know what I'm saying? Like 
something like that or man whatever like that was a that was a very or worker you know if you say call somebody a worker right now i mean that's a very general statement in a sense does it make sense it does um i guess when i asked the question would all masters have been rabbis i kind of meant rabbis like teacher like would inherit in a master's role be like teaching those who he has mastered of course yeah, I, I think inherently, I, but I'm, I'm cautious to just say yes because I, I want us to be clear that when Yeshua was teaching, when the when the, the first century disciples was using rabbi, it referred to, okay, put it like this. All right, Ashes, like this. Can anybody be a preacher? I don't think so. I, I don't know. Well, I would, I, I would say, say I, my brain would say no. Right, your brain would say no. But what does it mean to preach? To just like yap about God. Ah, notice what you said to yap about God. So a rabbi was somebody who yapped about God. But the reality is, like, man, Drake is a preacher. Mm. Oprah is a preacher. Jay-Z is a preacher. They're making proclamations. But you would never go around and say, oh, they're preachers, because inherent in the word preacher, you think of somebody who's talking about God's word in a church. That 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 word is kind of reserved for the Christian community. That's like, if he's a preacher, that means he's a, he has a congregation, just like the word pastor. We say as a shepherd, but we don't think about legitimate shepherds. If we see somebody... Um, herding sheep, we may say, oh, they're a farmer. We're not going to be like, oh my gosh, look at the pastor. Because that word is traditionally reserved for the church community. The word rabbi was traditionally reserved for the Torah teaching community, not generally speaking. That makes sense. I know. That's very helpful. Great question. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions or takeaways? I had a question. Um, yes, ma'am. I more so want to know how to look into it. But you got you talked about Tuvita talked about Abba or Abi, um, and how the I holds meaning as everything does. Um, and so I was wondering, like, well, what would be the difference? Abi and Abba, like knowing that the I and Abi is my personal, but then Abba, I don't want to assume, but I do want to know, like, in seeing these things, where would you find that information? Where would you? Yeah, yeah, you know, I hate that question. You know, I absolutely hate that question. So that's a dumb question. Love the first part of it, second part, I don't like. Um, so I'm answering it. Um, but I love the heart of it. So I want to answer the first one because I want you to, because I rather walk, I want you to walk away with not where to find it, but where to, how to apply it. I got kids, I got daughters, right? And my daughters call me this, right? There's time I walk into the school and my little, my middle baby, she says, hi, Mr. Fig. Because all the other kids, you know, I, don't, I want to be incognito. I don't want to buy any, no, shut up, girl, right? So she'll call Mr. Fig. She's like, it, it, because I'm discreet or whatever she says, I'm mysterious. I don't want anybody to know who I am. And then there's times where she would say, hi, dad, very general, you know, hey, dad. And there's times where it's just like, hey, father, she like, or I may call her father, very proper, right? Just very kind of, that's more of a proper saying. And then there's times where it's like, daddy. She had that D-Y, they, both of them add that D-Y to the end of it. I'm about to go broke, right? Because I already know they're about to be asking me for something. They 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 put that D-Y on the end of it. 
that that just that just do that just that just do a little something extra to me like daddy and if they even if they sing it like daddy i oh boy oh boy so, cash up about to get blink 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 right hey dad very casual you know i'm still positionally i'm still the same but their approach for me dictates kind of their their where they're at where they're at right now the reason why i'm like you could go find the information it, it's like okay the reason i don't like those questions of information finding is because it's like there's so much purity in what was just said it don't even matter like apply that like a, apply our approach to the father and if he wants us to find, then it had like I, you know, that was one question I didn't know where she got this from. I, you know, I heard her, you know, sharing this in the Bible study. I don't even care where it came from, nor do I have to be the one to find it. And it's nothing that is is it, application of this truth helps me get closer to knowing the Father. I don't care where it comes from. It came from the sweet potato and whatever study she did. I don't care. I don't want to go. Why am I going to double work? Because my objective isn't to try to go gain the information she got. It's to try to see what she sees. Like, dang, you dang, you see in the Our Father's Prayer that, man, God is more intimate than I thought. Heck yeah, I want in intimacy with God. I don't care how you got it. I want intimacy with him. The objective is greater to know, not to, to gain information, but to know him. So seeing that there was a level of more, you know, vulnerability and more authenticity and more and, and a level of more uh, uh um emotion attached to it i just want to do that that that's the, that's the win in it it's now i have a newer more authentic way to approach the father not let me have a new study lesson to go find so yeah I, you know it might the harshness of it was really to try to promote the love of it of like yo like we ain't never heard this before. Let's go press into that. Let's go press into our relational equity with Abi. That's a lot different than just casually blowing over this. Like it was not meant to turn into a lesson, but an instruction of like, hey, here's how we could go. Here's how you could go deeper with the Lord. And here's how the master Yeshua taught us to go deeper with the Lord, not I'm going to build notes so I could go find this for myself. Like, and then as you're doing that, still have this very, the same kind of level of intimacy with calling up the Lord's name as you did prior to looking it up. And that's so dang, I don't want to care about information junkie. But I do love the first question of like, you know, where, where is it? Like that, that's rich. That's a, a thought. That's a heart provoking question of like, how do I go closer to him? How do I draw into that? That's that's the takeaway from this is, oh, man, we've got stuff to draw closer into him. No matter how it is, I don't care how it happened. I, that, that's my goal to know him. And that's where eternal life and abundant life is found. Go ahead, Sukta. I was just going to say, um, <clears throat> since I've been, we've, we've started praying every morning. And <clears throat> since I started looking at this, um, prayer our father which art in heaven like i that is actually becoming real like i'm trying i'm attempting to press and in it's into this prayer every time that i pray and throughout my day remembering um i'll be um you know the how that he wants that intimate relationship with me and then even just like when I'm praying, I'm trying now to make sure that my prayers, that he is the object of the prayer, you know, that I do um, and throughout the day, Lord, I'm thinking about following his name more, you know, and sanct or sanctifying his name more. Um, so, yeah, since just even breaking down one part at a time of this known verse, and I think Tiny summed it up perfectly, it's it almost given to you as you could use it if you want to or not using it but not giving it to you as a teaching of actually teaching you how to pray and 
all of my life, it's been a verse that you memorize. And once you memorize it, everybody praises you because now you have um, the Father's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer memorized. Well, versus now, the more that I look into it, like every bit of that. Um, well, Fig, you have taught that the word of God is actually living and breathing. And I think what it does for me is it just makes this, the words of this page just pulsate even more like a bre yeah, like breath. It, a just it puts a heartbeat to the scripture now and makes it even more real and living. So, And, and I want to circle back around. I'm sorry, Shonda, for keep on like interjecting. Actually, I want to go back to something Alexandria said, that something that I have thought a lot about before is I've heard plenty of times in, in, in scriptures or we've seen in Acts where they speak the utterance of tongues. And then in Acts chapter two, they said they spoke in tongues and other people understood them. Now, when I, which, which is crazy because when I be praying sometimes and I hear people pray and I, they may not know what they, they're saying, like universally, hallelujah, it's universal. Amen, it's universal. Like those are two Hebrew words that are very universal. But I know as I've learned to pray, continuously pray, I know that I have then been, I have been able to say, you even hear me say this throughout the teaching. Uh, it says, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Elohim, the God of heaven, the sovereign one, the mighty God, Prince of Peace, Yeshua, Yahuwah, Yahusha, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, HaMashiach, my Lord, my King, my Master, my Husband, my 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 Redeemer, my Savior, my, you know, I mean, my, my, my Rapha, my Healer, my this and my that and my this and my, and, and being able to say He is who He is, like I did, because when we talked about the word, which is kind of ironic, we did talk about the word Abba today, because um, Maya was, um, I think she's in Arkadelphia or something, or in Little Rock. And I heard her say shalom to somebody. And it's like, you know, like, who's shalom and you? Like, you know, that's kind of a, a thing that we've learned kind of within, within our, our, our ministry, our environment. So it's like, okay, here's these words. And we was talking about um, earlier this week about the word ab or ab, which is the word father. Ab is the word father. But then this ba, this ba, right? And it was, it was, it was really interesting this is like like ba is the language of the sheep the sheep says you know ba ba so you know it's just like you know some babies i think they say like a ba, ba so it was just kind of this this very organic language of of this word that they're calling out to we've also talked about before alexandria the 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 breath of right like Right. And we talk about the Yahweh or Yahoo or Yahuwah, whatever is the breath of God and how simple and essentially that formation is. So we have like, you know, when kids start learning language, they're like that, 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 that. Oh, he said that, that. He said that, that. Right. And then, right. But as they mature, they start going that, that, dad, daddy, dad, you know, father. And as they kind of progress, they it's the same person, but it's almost like, their, their language towards them or towards this individual kind of maturates or matures itself, you know, at times, you know, and, and it's almost this, this, this kind of thing. And then side note, right. I, there was also, you know, I was talking to Shonda and Mr. Tim several like last week. And I said, do you know what the other universal language is? And, and I didn't realize it, but one of the universal languages is pain, Pain is universal. Like it don't matter what country you go to, if you hit somebody, they says, "Oh, my voice is gone." But they say, "Ow, ow is just as it, ah, you know, it's the same across the the board." Why am I saying that? It's because that question that you asked is like, "Oh, I see Abba, I see Abi, I see, you know, what is it? What?" Is, and I'm saying it's all, it's all, it's like, it, cause we'll say Avianu, well, you know, or Avianu is another word that we would see when it talks about our God or Abi or Abba or Ab or all of those different words. It's words now or expressions of word to the God that we have faith in 
to express him differently, knowing that, okay, now I'm seeing that Abi or Abba or any one of those words is still in the maturation of my communication with this, with the sovereign God, who now I know he's my father, right? Because we've taught, we've been taught the scripture, our father, not our Abba. But as you know, Abba for us is now our very general term. We might praise Abba. You know, like Abba did this, Abba go crazy. Like we now refer to him as father. So now this deeper level is like Abi. It's like my father. And it just keeps on getting more and more and more personal. And if we just, and I was using that, those other examples to show kind of the, the simplicity of humanity, how we use our tongue and our words and our expressions in a tangible way. And how now what we're learning here is going to help us to learn how to approach him in a very organic way. Just like, hey, Abba, like, hey, y'all, what have Abba done for you? Like, man, praise Abba. Like, we'll continue to do that. You know, Abba loves you. But now when I go pray and I can say, Abi, like my father, like I could then take that into my own, my, my, my olive grove, right? You know, my place where it's the me, 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 I, 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 cause I got one of them too, right? The place where I'm just, Lord, I'm, I suck, forgive me, you know, that happens every day, but you know. I, I now could take in a more personal approach to him versus this dear God, right? Like what I used to start off with and then father or then savior, then father, then Abba, now Abi. So it's just helping us to get um, closer. Yeah, that's what I got. Did that help? Yes, sir. That helped a lot. Thank you. Of course. Sure. Yeah. Um, another takeaway I had with Abba is how my mind is definitely blown whenever you talked about um, the disciples now seeing him as Abba and knowing and hearing about how like respected and just the, the relationship, like the greatest relationship is between a father and a son. Um, and just what they would have heard when he introduced him is that like our father, not just my father, but he's also your father. And like, he's my father, like, like, like my Abba at home, like the one that you're talking about, like we're getting an inheritance with. And I know like I say that is mind blowing because I remember whenever that was, he was introduced to me like that. Cause growing up in the church, that was never a thing, you know, like even like you guys were talking about, with the prayer, it's never just like that. Our father is absolutely looked over, um, never broken down, never explained, never even talked about him being a father, but rather just the prayer. And so it's just like I've always seen him growing up as like this scary God and this master, this king who sits on the throne. And that's it. Um, almost respectfully, like a president. Um, and I'm like, <laughs> okay <laughs> but then when I got introduced to him as like a father and now like I am his daughter and all this stuff like that like that is so intimate so mind-blowing so I imagine or I, I wonder like how many of them would have cried because I know that whenever Abba was introduced to me as my Abba it was more like I was lacking in it like I didn't have it um and so yeah there's just like the amount of feelings and emotions that would have came with hearing that, whether it be confusion or like even like disbelief. Um, but it, it just, that's so cool. Um, also with that, like talking about um, Abby, it's like, I, it's so personal, so intimate. Cause I know like how my dad feels when I'm like, when I lived with him at one point and I would just be like, dad, and he's like, he, his ears are so fixated and how much more is Abba's ears fixated to me when I call him, like you were talking about with like your kids. Um, I'm like, when I call him like Abby, like Abba, like like the excitement and like the delight that I, I, I believe that he takes in hearing me say his name. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's so cool. And it definitely was a good like addition to 
all that I learned at I Am Daughter. Um, so thanks, Sweet Potato, for sharing that intimacy. Alexandria, that word that also is like saying daddy, papa. And those are, I always tell my husband this. I say, man, when I hear a girl, when I hear his daughters call him daddy, to me, that's, that's special. When a little girl calls their dad, daddy, um, like that, like you don't, like, don't nobody get to get in that relationship when a girl is referring to her dad as daddy in my, in my heart, in my eyes. And I personally never had that, never had that relationship with my dad. You know, but I did have a papa granddaughter relationship with my grandpa. So because I was like, OK, father, how am I supposed to see you through the? How am I supposed to what example do I have of a father? You know, because I don't have anybody that I call daddy, but I can look at that word and say, oh, my my papa in, in my mind, like I could say my papa. And I had that with my grandpa, you know, like he would joke with me. He would tease me. He would take me. I could say papa. We can, can I have some ice cream? And he would act like he didn't want to give it to me. But then next thing I know, there's a bowl of ice cream in front of me, you know. So I had that endearment with him. And then even the Lord even just showing me and dealing with me. And this is, yeah, though my dad wasn't perfect, Abba Father allows me pictures of moments of what a relationship between a father and a daughter is or how a father really truly has a desire to be with their daughter. Though my dad has some other things that hinder that, there is when I can put boxes around, frame up sometimes in those moments with him, he has a desire to be a father and to and to spend time with, with us. You know, it, I know that might sound crazy to others, but for me, to be able to sit, to be able to look at my dad and say, oh, wait, I could pull that moment out when he was teaching me how to drive. Man, that's how Abba, Abby wants to do me. He wants to teach me how to drive. And then, but and and so just I'm learning how to how to overlook the other things. And there's pockets in there that Abba has graciously given me to be able to see him and then to give me a husband who walks as a daddy with his daughters to even open it up more for me now because I because I like Lord how do I do this with you how do I even refer how what is the abby what is a father you know what is that I'm supposed to treat you like that I'm supposed to be your daughter but how do I do this and since I am daughter, he's showing me like little pockets of moments with my dad, but he's also allowed me to marry a strong father, a strong daddy who has a strong relationship with his daughters. And I tell my husband times, times I'm not engaging in what you guys are doing because I'm literally sitting back and watching what you are doing, watching your interactions like learning your interactions, you know? So I, I, to, he gives us those natural, I, it's like he gives us natural, tangible fathers, maybe even father figures around us to show us how to be his daughter, but to also now, since we know this now, he's revealed how he is an Abbey, even in our, how we're supposed to approach him in our prayers, if that makes sense. Yes, ma'am, it does. Thank you so much. Oh, that's good. Anybody else? All right, bro, Steve, it's on you, bro. What do you mean? Uh, I'm done talking. Okay. So, all right, so I guess so.
if everybody else is done, I guess we'll just pray and uh, close. Father, thank you for this uh, time tonight, this um, chance to consider how to approach you, how to uh, engage with you, how to speak to you and uh, relate to you. Pray that uh, you would uh, reveal this to us and uh, add it to our our life as a uh, just a better relationship with you. Amen. Hey, bro, Steve, real quick before you go. Hey, because th this was definitely off screen. What was what, what was you going to teach tonight? What was you going to share with us? Um, I've been looking up uh, John the Baptist, you know, because um, he was another one that people thought Jesus looked like, John the Baptist. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I went through some of the stuff. You know, the last that... week we did, we did Eliyahu, right? Yeah. And he was going to do John the Baptist this week. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Give us some homework. So Kingdom, John the Baptist, some stuff I want to look at, at our father. Okay, mm. very good. All right, man, appreciate you. All right. All right, shalom, y'all. Shalom, love y'all. Shalom, love y'all. Shalom, love y'all. Shalom, love y'all. Shalom. Love you guys. Hey, Miss Sue. Yes. Yeah, I just said hi. Hi, Brother Steve. Just saying hi. <laughs> hi. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.